Hey, all Andy here, helping you build a career you love. Today, we're going to be talking about resume writing. Actually, we're going to be talking about resume thinking. We're going to be talking about resume writing, and I'm going to, I'm going to do some artificial intelligence stuff to help you along, and I'm really looking forward to it. I hope you are, too. I, uh, I just, I, I've been talking about this for the last few weeks with members of my job search coaching program, my boot campers. We spent 10 hours last week together writing resumes, reviewing resumes, learning everything you need to know about how to put a killer one together. I'm bringing you, I'm bringing you a handful of clips. We're going to do this live, but I, I took a handful of, of messages all related to what I consider to be the single greatest thing you can do for your resume to give it the most power. There are a lot of aspects to the resume. Uh, a career profile, which is a summary at top, at the top, to me is the most important section of a resume. Uh, that, that captures somebody's attention and it gives them an overview of who you are and what you're about. And I think it's the most important part of the resume. But if I have to give you one tip related to how to put more power into the resume to get employers enticed about giving you a job interview, setting yourself up well when you get into the interview to tell them stories and answer interview questions related to how you are going to help them achieve their goals and solve their problems and add value to their lives, this is it. We're covering it today. Like I said, it's in about maybe about three little parts, right? Thinking about what you're going to be doing, what specifically you should be doing, and then how you might be able to use AI to help you do it. Okay, let me say a quick hello. I saw my mom was 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 saying hello. Uh, first first and foremost, thanks, mom. Always, always love to see you at the shows. Teresa Bragg, what's up? Loretto, Stephanie, look at Fabiana. I mean, look at all of these boot campers. Amy Willoughby, I love it. Kara's here. She always got my back. Andrea, Susan, Styers, TD, Washington. I don't know why my chat's moving slower than it normally does, but great to see everybody. Buckle up. Uh, if you got any questions, put some question marks in front of your questions because we are gonna do a we are gonna do a Q and A. Let me just pop this chat out here uh, just so I have a backup just in case. I always, you know what? We do a lot of. We do a lot of things to make sure that we deliver you good service. Okay, I did mention that last week I built an entirely new resume writing workshop. Uh, we did it three hour, three plus hours a day uh, for three days in a row, and that wasn't even enough to do everything. And we talked about how to write a resume, the career profile, which goes up top. There's some career highlights or achievements that's next. You want that stuff in the top half of the first page of the resume. That's your billboard. It's your book cover. It's the thing that captures attention of the interviewer. You want them stoked, excited about you. You want them to make up their mind before they even get into the professional experience section. You want that mind made up that they're going to invite you in for an interview. This happens. Believe me, as an executive recruiter, a long time one at that, uh, I, I, I could I could tell you with a 90% certainty after just looking at somebody's career summary at the top whether I was going to like them and invite them or want to talk them want to talk with them about an opportunity. So, uh so we we did all of that and uh and like I said in the opener here, I want to give you a quick peek into one of the particular lessons uh related to how to improve your resume to add power. I've got some slides I want to show you. Uh, and Carol, as I flip this over, just let me know that everything's good. I see green buttons, which makes me happy. I went with red today and the blue wind muff, windshield. I think I, I like that combo. Uh, I mean, purple and green are my favorite colors, but I was feeling kind of red and blue today to brighten up your day. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is just a couple of slides, just a few of them outside of uh, the resume writing workshop. And one thing that I... I want to drill home is that your resume is a marketing document. It's about where you want to go. Uh, it's it it is and uses where you've been to justify and tease and imply on your part and infer on their part uh, what it is that you want, what it is you're equipped to do, and the best way to actually market you is to think about in the future what is it that you want to do, where is it that you want to go, meaning which organization or organizations, what kind of role do you want, 
And then your resume is designed and built after you determine where your destination is not before, which is probably the first mistake that most, most people that I work with make is that they think I need to search for a job. Uh, I better put my, I better put my resume together. Say, if you're going to search for a job, I want you to tell me what is it that you want to, to make happen and let's figure out how to make that happen. And the resume is one part of that. So if you think about the employers that you want to go to and what their goals are, you could think in terms of, well, what's that company's goals, right? Every company exists to make money and serve customers. Don't overcomplicate it. Then each department contributes to the company's ability to make money, right? Or save money, right? And the combination makes what? Profit, right? And, 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 and some, some departments, they acquire customers. Other departments, they might service customers, right? Other departments might account for all the money that they're collecting from the customers, right? It, it all goes together. So you think about at the corporate level, what is it that that company is doing and what are its goals? And then at a division level or a unit level, what are those goals? If I'm going to go work in the accounting department, what are the accounting department's goals, Right. Make sure all the data is accurate. Make sure all the things are the invoices are going out. The collectibles and the receivables are 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 coming in, right? All that good stuff. The books are accounted for as quickly and as inexpensively and as accurately as possible, right? If I'm in the marketing department, my job is to what? Generate leads, generate prospects. The secondary uh, goal of that is to generate them at the lowest possible cost. The next thing I want to consider is I want to make sure that the ones I'm finding are going to be converted into customers at the least expense. So our sales team can actually convert them inexpensively and at a high rate, right kind of thing. I, I might have as a content marketer in the marketing department, my job might be to write wonderful prose to go into social media messages and white papers or digital content or videos or whatever so that we attract prospective, uh, prospective buyers or customers or clients online, on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on TikTok, on threads, on X now, I guess he's calling it. But you get the idea. Think at the big picture. First step. What's your first step? Think about where you want to go. Okay, what would make you most desirable for somebody who needed that? That's step one. Step two is what problems do they have in achieving those goals? All businesses have the same goals. They all do. They might look a little different but they're all the same. They need to make money. They don't make money, they don't stay in business. They don't have customers who pay them, they don't stay in business. The marketing department for every company, their goal is the same. It's what I just said three minutes ago, right? Generate leads. Now, one company's ability to generate leads might be very simple. Maybe they're just Coca-Cola, or maybe they're the only game in town, right? Another company might have a real hard time generating leads because there's a hundred different stores that sell this product that are all on the same block or on the same internet channel, right? And there's crowded space. Maybe we have a unique product, but we don't have anybody who really understands how to put advertisements together online. That's our problem, right? Kind of thing. So while we all have the same goals, we all have different problems, and as a sneak pre pre preview into interviewing, the person who not only helps them achieve their goals, but also knows how to do it because they have already previously solved the problems that that organization has is the person that gets hired, period, hard stop. That's it. Now you're going to say, well, how do I know that in advance? You don't, right? You don't know that. You might have a job description, but you got to get in there and actually talk to them about what the real problems are. And then you need to know in advance if you've solved them, how you've solved them, and how you're going to tell the story that you solved them. Putting it on the resume and showing that you've addressed the most important goals and likely problems that organizations have had that you're targeting is the way to entice them while you're not there speaking to them and getting to ask them questions about what problems do they have. There's a great likelihood that... I know that job seekers all have the same goal. You all want to find a great job, except that 
There are hundreds upon hundreds of different issues in attaining that job. Some people can get interviews, but they don't know how to tell stories. Other people are stay-at-home parents returning to the workforce and their skills are stale, right? Somebody wants to move from the left coast to the right coast in the U.S., and they're not sure how to look or where to look or how to find those organizations. You all have the same goal. You all have different problems. Fortunately, I'm old enough to have solved all of them for you. We're talking about the resume problem right now. Okay, so you get the idea. Who's tracking? Let me know you're here. Tell me you're tracking. I'm tracking in the chat. Give me a pound I'm tracking. I need to see it. You can use the apostrophe or you can use the G. Either one is okay. All right, and then you're using your previous employer's experience and anything you've done to substantiate that I have done that. I have solved that problem. I've solved it to a degree, right? And what do y'all ask me? Andy, there's a junior position and I think the pay is low and should I apply? If I'm looking for a social media marketer who can help me generate 100 leads a month or a day or a week, and you've got the skills to help me generate 10,000 a day, don't you think I'm going to be interested in you? Don't you think I'm going to be willing to pay more for you? Because you just changed my goal in my mind. And I'm looking for somebody who could help me get 100 leads a day. You're telling me, no, Andy, I can get you 10,000 leads a day. What would that be worth to you? Am I not going to pay more if I get more? Right? You're now altering my view of what I'm looking for, the goal I have, and the degree to which it can be solved, which then in turn, in turn lagging effect, changes the compensation I'm willing to pay. I want you to be thinking about all this stuff as you're putting your resume together. Okay, I love that I'm tracking. I love the pink wavy hands. Michael Tay, I love that emoji. Michael Tay, you're up late, man. I appreciate you, buddy. I really do, because I know it's late where you are. Actually, it's early, early in the morning where you are. Okay, now, where I'd love to see the most powerful information that talks about the goal achievement and the problems you solved is at the top half of the first page of a resume. I'm not going to go through the whole resume, but basically, basically, if, if a resume is just formatted like that, that's two pages, the first page is on the left. When somebody reviews the, the, the resume and they're looking at the top portion of the first page, basically they're asking themselves, well, who are you? I'm a marketing professional. I'm a chief marketing officer. I'm a business analyst. I'm a chief accountant, right, kind of thing. What, what have you done on a, in a major scale? Well, if you're in the marketing department, have you helped organizations lift their brand to what degree? Have you helped organizations uh, secure new prospects that turned into customers, generated leads that turned into customers? Did you build a dashboard that generated analytics that helped you make great decisions to do that, to increase that? What, what is it, from a roll-up perspective, have you done? I just need an order of magnitude all rolled up together. It's a summary of you. Uh, what type of organizations have you worked at? I've worked at small to medium-sized technology organizations. I've worked at small software as a services companies that provide business to business solutions in manufacturing or something like that. Maybe you've worked for public organizations, private organizations, municipalities, government, non NGOs, nonprofits, or whatever, some kind of illustration. But I'm looking for based on what it is you're sharing with me, have you helped organizations solve the goal that I have in my organization? If you're a seller, have you sold a lot? If you're a marketer, have you marketed a lot? And then what I'm looking for is as I go from your summary or what I like to call the career profile, which is very, very at the top, the next section, section is your career achievements or what I like to call your career highlights. I like three of them. And I'd love to see highlights that actually show how you've helped organizations solve the goals that you are likely going to need to, to, or to, go, to achieve, that you are likely going to need to help organizations achieve based on who your target organizations are. And then what type of problem did you need to overcome with doing that? 
And you get to do that right up at the top. The reason you want to have this section is because you want to pull their eyes, so to speak, forward and get them to look at what you want them to look at. More so than what's likely happening is they are looking for what their hiring official told them to look for. Okay, but you can stop them from doing that by putting something enticing at the top. And, and if, you've, if you've played your cards correctly, you've already thought about that in advance. If you are a seller of software as services solutions for large scale uh, customer relationship management um, solutions, right? It's, there's a great likelihood that they're gonna wanna see how you help the customer, right? What you generated in terms of revenue that you generated for your company, that's a goal. Did you serve a customer? What what miraculous thing did you do for an organization as it relates to that? Something like that. That's another highlight, right? So you're checking off some of the key goals that they would want the sales department to, to solve or achieve and, and what a business development executive or a sales executive or an account executive would specifically do. And you want to do that all up at the top and you want to put some evidence of the fact and putting it in a properly formatted bullet where you're talking about what actually happened, the result first, and then how you did that, right? You solved some problem that enabled you to achieve those benefits. The benefits come first, how you did it, your, the cause, what you did comes second. Okay? So this is this is really really important. And then I'm going to skip over the rest of the resume, but I want to talk to you about where to get started when you think about goals and problems that need solving. Every organization wants to make money. They want to serve customers. Then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes along with it. If you're working for a government organization, just trade out you know, customers for constituents, for, you know, people living in the community or whatever. There's an analogous thing for you. But generally speaking, 90% of you are working in commercial organizations. And in commercial organizations, every commercial organization cares about what I call the great eight. You probably heard me say this over and over and over. And you know what? I never get tired of saying it because I need it to be drilled in your head that there are eight things employers care about. Number one, they care about acquiring customers and getting paid and serving them, right? And making them happy and making them repeat customers so that they can make money, right? They, they care about making money. And when I say making money, it's not just generating revenue, it's making profit. And in order to do that, and not only do that, but in many cases, right, they need people that have to do that. And the happier the people, the more effectively they do that. They have to account for it. They have to pay their taxes. They have to make themselves attractive to be acquired by other companies if that's their thing or whatever. So there's a host of things that generally break down into these eight buckets. So I'm going to run through them quickly. You generate money, period. Okay, maybe you sell something or maybe you support the sales process. You increase brand awareness or market awareness. This is a lift in recognition, making it easier for people to know you, your company that is, right? And you don't need to be on the marketing team to do this. You might create, you might be the technologist who creates a white paper that then gets circulated by the content manager because she put it out on social media in a Facebook ad or something like that. That's still helping increase market awareness and generating leads, right? You get the idea. Customer attraction. Maybe you're an inside sales rep that calls out. Maybe you're just a customer service rep that fields inbound calls when stuff's broken, right? Maybe you're aug not just le generating the lead, but you're augmenting the lead, that kind of stuff. That's a revenue generation and customer retainment, so to speak. Cu customer happiness, maybe you are just on the customer service team. Maybe you're the customer service manager who's setting up the processes and streamlining the way the customer service representatives do their work kind of thing. Maybe you're the technologist that implemented a software system where the customer service reps now have a great dashboard where they can get their reports and inquiries done faster, which reduces call times and so on and so forth. There's company growth like IPO, mergers and acquisitions, divestitures, and so on, selling off or whatever. 
There's employee happiness. Everybody who manages a team is responsible for employee happiness. Every recruiter, HR person is responsible for recruiting people and making them happy and figuring out how they should develop their careers and, and make sure that they're being trained properly and enticed properly and all that other stuff. So there's employee happiness. There's cost reduction. Anybody who is streamlining any process in an organization is helping save money. If you're the accountant that reduced the closing cycle from seven days to five days, you just saved two days of I don't know how many people's time that saves money. Maybe you're the lean six sigma. I don't know. Let's be generous. You got a black belt and you're an internal consultant and you're streamlining manufacturing processes to make them more efficient. This is this is what I'm talking about here. Any kind of process efficiency or cost reduction. Maybe you're the accountant who is is, uh, you know, figuring out ways to um you know, invoice more economically. Maybe you set up a system to streamline the amount of time that it takes for somebody to to uh, to do something on your team. That reduce costs, right? Any any of this kind of stuff. All of these are the areas to start when you're thinking about. Okay, what are the goals of that department? And they're they're going to fall into one of these buckets. Every one of you does at least one of these things. That's where you want to start with 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 your goals. So, I want you to I want you to think about that and that's where I want you to start cuz that's going to give you a lot of a lot of lift. Now, I want I want to I want to talk to you here for a quick second before I go on to the next slide. Oop, there we go. Now, what a lot of you do uh which which is is not good is you think about what am I proud of and what do I want to put on my resume? And you, you think internally, and which, is, which is actually the killer of sales. If you think about you, you're dead, period. Dead, like DOA. And if, if you could step outside of yourself for a second and try to forget everything you've done, just, just forget that nonsense, right? It was, I'm sure it was fun, but when it comes to this, it hurts your ability to actually think forward and think about them. So if I am that customer service manager and I want that job, I have to think in multiple dimensions. Forget what I've done. What is it they want? Where can I figure that out? Why well, I, I know what I do. I know how I'm graded. I know likely what the goals are. They want happy customers. That's great. Goals. What kind of problems do they have with making customers happy? Maybe they don't have good service reps. They're just not nice people. Maybe they just don't have any empathy. That could be a problem. Maybe they are all the sweetest pieces of pie, and they just have a bad system, and the system hangs all the time. Like when I call Blue Cross and Blue Shield, and I have a question about my benefits, and they have to go into 18 different systems to figure out if what I'm asking for is in the formulary. I'm sure the lady's really nice, but that's what it's like. And and so now I think, all right, I'm interviewing for that job. I know I know what they want, and I have experienced in my lifetime a lot of different problems that occur in in that unit's ability to do that. But now I have to add another dimension. It's not just the goals and it's not just the problems. What skills are they looking for? Not what skills do I have? What skills do they want? Because anything any of you do, I can spin into anything that any employer wants for that particular role if you know how to shine a light on it. And so if I think about this is their goal, these are likely their problems, so I need to make sure that they know I know how to achieve those goals, I can get them there, I've, helped, I've already helped other organizations overcome these problems, and now I'm going to nail the coffin shut with exactly what skills are they looking for. So I don't care what the job description says. What does a customer service rep or customer service manager need? Right? And so when you start thinking about what are the skills they need, am I pulling those forward? Don't rely on a job description to tell you this. Okay? So now I want you to think about this. Here's that example of that customer service rep. So instead of on your resume saying, well, I provided customer support service for, 
What does a customer service rep need? They need to be empathetic, right? Nobody, and I mean nobody, calls the customer service department to compliment them, right? Why do they call? Something's broken, right? They got to have customer service skills. How do you serve a customer? Got good communication skills? You articulate, right? Can you engage with me? Are you, I'll take you one better. You influential, right? Do you know how to speak to me? Do you know how to, how to recognize my mood, what I'm saying, what I need, right? Are you organized? Is everything at your fingertips? Are you actually knowledgeable on the product or service that you're servicing, right? That know-how is, is knowledge. And then what's your follow-through, right? Part of customer service is follow-up. And then another example is knowledge base. Are you building the knowledge base? So it's great that you come in and you fly through your customer service calls, but are you documenting your best practices for the next person who joins the team? For the other players who are not as efficient as you, are you helping me build the infrastructure? These are all skills that matter. You don't see all of these called out on a job description if you even have one, right? And then, so you're looking for ways in your resume to put this information in. And then, what are the stories? What are the goals? What are the stories you need to have when you get into the interview, which you've hopefully uh, previewed on your resume, what are the areas that you need to focus on? Customer satisfaction. Did it go up? We always talk. I know my, my boot campers know when I do this. What's this? Who could tell me what this is? What do we always, always care about? Anytime we cite any accomplishment we've made, what are we always looking to do? The Delta. If you don't give me the Delta, I don't know if it improved, if you say you managed a $30 million portfolio of customers and you're the customer service manager, was it 40 million when you started or was it zero or 10 mil? I need to understand the Delta. If you're going to tell me that customer sat went up, did it go up 0.2%? Did it go up 20%? Then you're going to get, why did it go up? Did you add a new product that everybody just loved? Or did you have something to do with it? What did you have to do with it? Right? Who who gets who gets what I'm who gets what I'm talking about, right? Like you have to have context. Call times go down. These are the these are the goals, right? And every single one of these goals has a problem associated with it, right? Time to fix. How long did it take you to figure out what Andy's formulary thing was? Oh, my computer's broken. It's got to go to level three support. How long is this taken? Right kind of thing. Did the documentation get better? Andy, I would have known that if the previous guy would have told me that you talked to him for two hours. It's like when I call Apple. Right? When I call Apple, it's like, oh, God, I'm going to have to repeat everything I just said to somebody. Right? Well, no, if the documentation or documentation of my call or documentation of the process or every rep knows what to do, did revenue go up? Did you happen to have more time because the customer service manager streamlined the processes that created more time for the customer service reps to actually handle the call, which gave them more time to sell Andy more stuff, right? These are the kind of things. Attrition, retention, those are numbers we're going to look at. Hey, did you do something to make sure that every time a new rep comes to you, they get up to speed faster. Do y'all do y'all see do y'all see the difference? We got three issues. What are the goals? What are the problems in achieving the goals? And what skills do I need to make sure that they truly understand I have? So this is this is just it's just hugely vital. So now you're probably thinking, well, Andy, this is all great and good, but how the hey am I gonna figure this out? Well, I don't, I'm Andy and I never leave you hanging, right? So when you get into, now this goes for any bullet, by the way, but I'm talking about highlights, get them up at the top, three biggies, but I would, I would treat this for any bullet, all right? This is what I do. This is what I, I think about. What are my top three goals? As a marketer, my top three goals might be to increase brand awareness, 
right? Increase prospect to lead to, lead to customer conversion rates. Well, but okay, that's great, but but I'm on the digital marketing uh, arm and I'm the digital content creator. Okay, well, are you writing better social media copy and are you getting a better lead magnet or something that people grab for free on the internets? Are you looking at the analytics so that you are, right, what? Getting either more of them, more probable buyers or whatever it is. What are the goals? So try to think in terms of what are my goals or what are my team goals? What are the specific objectives in the job description? Does the job description say specifically not what they want you to do, what they want you to accomplish? Put it the strategy together to run the blah, blah team. Tells you nothing. I mean zero, right? What does the strategy have to do? What does success look like? What's the goal we're trying to achieve? So ask yourself this kind of stuff, and if it's not there, you're going to have to manufacture it from experience, okay? Specific objectives that may not be there for this job description, but can I find any other job descriptions in the market that also show what this kind of process manager, product manager, marketing manager, content creator, or whatever needs to, to do? Okay, so you ask yourself those questions. And then what you do is you look at Okay, well, do I do one of those related to the great eight that Andy cited? Generate revenue, increase market awareness, increase customer satisfaction, right? And so on and so forth, employee happiness. Do I do something that's directly related to, to, those, to those major goals? If not, is it a prerequisite step? Am I the technologist who built a demo that was turned over to the sales team so that the sales team could take it and go to their sales meeting and demo it, right? That's a prerequisite step, right? Or maybe it's an ingredient. That could also be an ingredient, right? Developing that prototype. Or the ingredient could be I developed the white paper that went out that somebody used on the marketing team to go and help us attract new customers, right? So what you're doing here is you're trying to think through and, and come up with, do, and you want to do this, you don't want to start writing bullets to your accomplishments. Because most of the time, most of the accomplishments that I see on most resumes, that's most and most and most, are not really true achievements, or even if they are, they're not super relevant to where that person's going. So, so I want you to think about this. And now you might say, well, okay, Andy, how can I use AI to help me with this? So I'm going to I'm going to show you I'm going to show you that. And who's not stoked about this? So during the resume writing workshop, I took them through some of my favorite uses of of AI and ChatGPT in particular. I'm going to show you one as it relates to what I just shared with you here. So if I want to ask these questions and I want to use AI to do it, could I, pull, could I pull it off? So much like the example that I was citing, let's say I want to join the marketing department. What are the top three corporate goals of any marketing professional? I mean, chat GPT is pretty dang smart. But I would rather you ask it something like this than can you write a marketing bullet for me? I don't understand how they're going to put something together for you. Hey, I did this, this, and this. Can you write a bullet for me? And it's going to say, created blah, blah, that resulted in blah, blah. And it's not going to be a good bullet, blah, blah, right? Kind of thing. All right, so it goes on to say, all right, specific goals of marketing professionals can depend, no kidding, right? Increase brand awareness. Isn't that, isn't that what I would say? Heck yes. Drive customer acquisition. Yes. Enhance customer engagement and retention. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but yes to that as well. Let's ask it to give it three more. Can you provide three more goals? Right? Okay. What, what, what are three more goals? Increase sales revenue. Love it. Right? That's true. Improve customer satisfaction and loyalty. Sure, you could continue to market to existing customers. How many co people work for companies where their customers are either dormant or not engaging, not engaging in their stuff, 
right? All of us could do a better job. Enhance online presence and digital marketing. That could be a goal, but that's actually an activity. But that activity will lead to the goal. Okay, you get the idea. This is at the highest level. How about this one? Can you tell me the biggest challenges or problems companies have will have in achieving those goals? Now we're just at, in general. Can you just tell me what you think are marketing problems? I bet it's pretty smart. Competition. Market saturation, sure. How many career coaches are out there? How many of you have looked at other career coaches <gasps> before you found me? Or maybe you, you watch me and eight others, right? Kind of thing. Okay, changing customer behavior. Guess what? If this isn't a little ironic, you don't want to think about your resume and you don't even want to write it. You want Andy to tell you how to use AI to write it right? Changing behaviors or changing tools or changing needs or changing whatever, right? Okay. So you got to keep, you got to keep up on stuff, right? Limited marketing budget. This is probably a big thing for a lot of organizations. They don't want to spend it unless they know the ROI is going to be there and they're going to get the reward for it, right? Measuring marketing effectiveness. This is a problem, right? I'm putting advertisement out there, but I'm not sure if it's paying off. And so I think I'm spending a lot of money, right? Right? Technology changes. Okay. That's kind of AI, data privacy or whatever. You get the idea. All right. Now, now let's, let's go back to my little PowerPoint here. So when I think about AI, right? You can ask it things like we just asked it, right? What are the top three corporate goals of? Can you tell me the biggest challenges or problems that the that, that unit has? Right? That's what I just showed you. All right, so now let's now let's get it personalized. I work in the marketing department as a content manager who develops social media, blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that. Can you tell me what my three biggest goals should be to perform well in this job? Right? Everybody, this making sense, right? Not too, not, not too tough to see what's going on here, right? Okay, I work as a content marketing manager who develops social media posts to drive traffic to our company website and free downloads. Can you tell me what my three biggest goals should be to perform well in this job? You could take a job description and look at it. Take the title. Give it some more data if you want here. Okay, great generating engagement and engaging in rel relevant content. Okay, that's an activity. That's not a goal. That's just what you do. What the goal is, is so it's so enticing that people take it, right? I need somebody to take it. But first things first, increase web traffic. Awesome. You could be a technologist and do that. You could be the content marketer and do that. You could be the person who manipulates the SEO that does that, right? Boost free download conversions. Well, heck yeah. Well, wait, I need them to grab it, but geez, there's only 200 people a day taking my free resume template. Why isn't it a thousand? Right kind of thing. So it isn't just lifting the numbers. Well, you know, if 10, you know, a thousand people hit the page, but only 250 are taking it, why isn't it 500 or something like that, right? So you want to, you want to, you, you get the idea. And then I asked it, okay, give me, give me three more. And, and, and you get the idea here. And then, and then what? Well, what kind of problems am I likely going to face as a content manager? So if, if this company or the companies that I want to go to are wanting to hire a content manager, what are their issues? What are likely their issues, right? Just in, in general. This is a big one. We don't really have a strategy. And so we want to do this, and we want to do it as effectively as possible, but I need somebody who actually understands what the heck she's doing, right, kind of thing. Okay, consistent brand voice and messaging, right? Is it, is it well, we, we throw stuff out there, but it's not really consistent. Okay, these could be problems, sure. Content quality, now we're getting somewhere. And optimization, that's a, sec that's a separate thing, 
right? But you get the idea, collective and workflow. Okay, uh, I only have one person and she has to do everything. That's a problem. That's why we're looking to hire you to, you know, to, to bifurcate her duties, right? Oh, you know, we were creating these square videos with headings and now everybody want now, you know, Instagram reels or some other dimension that I still get confused on all these dang things, right? Like that kind of stuff. Now everything needs to change. You get the, you get the idea. And so this is, you know, kind of a, 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 a neat little, a neat little way to, you know, just use AI. This is one of the things I taught them. And the reason that I wanted to bring this to your attention is because I think pound for pound, if you said, if you asked me, Andy, where am I going to get the biggest bang for my buck when I, when I look at writing my resume? And I know a bunch of you now, you, uh, you think chat GPT is the answer to everything and, and, and nothing can be further from the truth. It's a phenomenal tool. But if you don't actually think about what it is that employers need and what it is they're trying to achieve and the potential problems, you're not going to get the job. So you could have somebody write your resume if you want. You could have the computer write the resume. And you might even get an interview. But if you don't understand this and you're not targeting and there's not a flow from in here and what I want to here and how do I sell that, Meaning, how do I sell me into what I want? What is it that I want to happen? How do I make that happen? The fastest way to sell yourself is sell to the gap. The fastest way to do that is to know what their gap is. That's not hard. Then you want to go down. You can hit the dartboard blindfolded. You want to hit the center of the dartboard with what are their problems. Okay, I know you want to increase your leads. What's your problem in doing that? It's one of the greatest questions you can ask in an interview. Okay, I know you want to increase your leads. What currently is your biggest problem? If that's not one of the first questions you're asking in an interview, you're doing it wrong. Okay, so you want to get all this in order, and then you're, what you're doing is you're playing the probability and odds that say, I've got experience where I've done this. I'm betting that they have that problem. You put that on your resume. Then they look at it and they say, dang, how'd you do that? And then you tell them about how you did it, all the problems you overcame, right? And all that stuff. And that's what wins the interview. And for those of you that need the crutch, I just gave you that simple four to five prompter request, whatever the hell they properly call it, commands to ask chat GPT or whatever your favorite AI tool of the day is. I hope you enjoyed that. It's 1143. I said I'd be done by a quarter till. Actually, I just said that in my head. But we're right on track. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, don't forget to smack the like button. Tell YouTube this was awesome. And I love Andy's live shows. And I'm subscribed to the station too because I never want to miss a weekly video on Tuesday, a live office hours on Thursdays, or those cute daily shorts that are like one minute YouTube videos that always go out. Although I think the other days was only like eight seconds. But anyway, I love having you. If you're watching this on the recording, I'll see you next week. If you're here with me live, we're going to the chat.